Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening. Hi everyone. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Aida. A I D A. So, Teacher Aida. Okay, just call me Teacher Aida and I am an English language teacher. I teach in Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Tengku Sulaiman located in bursary and I focus mainly on the PT3 exam. So, I guess some of you are wondering about me. I'm a local Perlis born and I also grew up in Perlis. Sekolah Rendah Kebangsaan Sri Indra is my primary school. So, after standard 6, I spent 5 years of my secondary education in Sekolah Menengah Sains Tuanku Said Putra also in Perdis, where I sat for my SPM examinations. So I had always wanted to be an English teacher. And after my SPM results, I enrolled into Maktab Perguruan Lembah Pantai in Kuala Lumpur as a teacher trainee. In December 1990, after my training, I was posted to a secondary school, Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Sultan Abdul Jalil Shah, which is located in Faircross, Seberang Perak. Uh, it's about 10 kilometers from Kampung Gajah and 30 kilometers from Teluk Intan, Perak. And after four years, I transferred back to Perlis in 1995. Since then, I had been teaching in Sekolah Mereka Pasaran Tengku Sulaiman until today. And I graduated in Tessa from Open University Malaysia while teaching in 2006. Okay, I think that's enough about me. So let's get to work. Uh, today we are going to learn about the CFR format, the new PT3 English format, which started last year. Okay, this format is totally different from the previous PT3 or PMR papers because this is based on the common European framework of reference for languages or known as CEFR. So what is CFR? CFR is a way of standardizing the levels of language exams in different regions based on the Cambridge English. It is widely used all over the world for all important exams. And in the exam, you will sit for four different papers for this new format. These papers are based on the four language skills, listening, speaking, reading and writing. So, please remember that you must attend all the papers to get a full certificate. Okay, now let's look at the four papers. Now for paper one, paper one will test students based on your reading and the use of English. While paper 2 is to test students on their writing skills. And students will be tested on your speaking proficiency in paper 3. Okay, and in paper 4, we'll test their listening skills. Okay, so the time given for paper 1 is 1 hour and 15 minutes. And for paper 2 is 1 hour. Paper 3... You only have 11 minutes to perform the test and for paper 4, you are only given 35 minutes to answer all the questions. Okay, now let's focus on paper 1, the writing test. Okay, the writing test covers um, the reading and use of English. It focuses in grammar, vocabulary and comprehension. There will be 5 parts in paper 1. Okay. So, here are the five parts. Okay, part one is the short text with eight multiple choice questions. Part two is based on error correction where you will have a text with eight errors underlined. So, please keep in mind that these errors are based on grammar and not spelling errors. You can only correct each of these errors with one word answer. Okay, next for part three, which is also known as information transfer, 
you will have to transfer information from an authentic text into graphic form such as a mind map. There are eight questions here and in part four you have to give responses in form of short answers to 10 questions based on a text. And lastly, for part 5, the task is to complete a gap text with 6, uh, sorry, uh, there's a mistake here in my PowerPoint. It should be 6 missing sentences or 6 missing phrases. Now, for each part, make sure you read every instructions that are given without skipping them. Okay, let's share the sample question for part one. Okay, now when you come to this question, make sure that you read both the text and the question. Now, I would advise you to read the questions and the choice of answers first because before you study the text so that you will have an idea of what you have to look in the text. So, as you read the text, try to underline any possible answers. Okay, let's look at the question now. Read the text carefully in each question. Choose the best answer, A, B or C. For each question, mark the correct answer, A, B or C on your answer sheet. Dear Fahana, sorry, I can't meet up because I'm going to Churia Mall after my music class. I forgot I need to get my mom a present for a birthday party this Saturday. Adila. Adila wrote the message to A. Explain why she cannot see Fahana. B. Remind Fahana to buy a gift for someone. C. Invite Fahana to go to Cheria Mall with her. Okay, so now let's look at the task. Okay, firstly... Do note that this message is from Adila to Farhana. So, don't get mixed up. Okay, next. Adila is apologizing. You see the word sorry here. Okay, she is apologizing for not being able to meet Farhana. Okay, I can't meet up. Means she cannot go and meet Farhana. Why? So, the reason is given here. Because I'm going to Cheria Mall. Okay, to get a birthday present for my mother. That means for her mother, sorry. So now look at the choice of answers. We had established earlier that Adila was apologizing and giving reasons okay, for not being able to meet Farhana. So therefore, A is the correct answer. Explain why she cannot see Farhana. Okay, now B is wrong. Because it is not about reminding Fahana of anything. And C is also wrong because nothing is mentioned in the text about invite, inviting anyone to go to Cheria Mall with her. Okay, now remember, even though A is the correct answer, you must go through all the choice of answers to make sure that you have gotten the correct one. Okay. Now, let's look at paper 2, the writing test. Okay, written English paper 2 consists of two parts, part A and part B. For part A, students are required to write up to 80 words. And in part B, students are required to write up to 120 words. Okay, so... How are you going to score for both parts? Okay. Here's how. Have you heard of the WH questions? I'm sure your teachers have been telling you about this over and over again. So you have to master the use of the WH questions. Who? Where? What? When? Why? How? So, by mastering these question skills, you will be able to generate ideas to make your stories longer and interesting. Okay, now let's look at an example of the question in paper 2, question part 1.
Read the message from your English speaking friend Alex. Hi, I'm thinking of starting a new hobby. I could do cooking, cycling or painting or maybe something else. What should I do? Let me know what you think, Alex. In about 80 words, write a message to Alex giving some advice. Okay. Yes, you are to give Alex some advice. Look at this task here. Write a message to Alex giving some advice. Okay, let's assume that you agree with Alex on the idea of uh, taking up cooking. Okay, but what about your stand? Okay, why do you choose cooking? So, this is the time for you to use your WH questions. You can come up with a lot of questions related to cooking as a hobby. Okay, for example, okay, why cooking? It saves a lot of money. Okay, you cook at home, so you don't have to go out and eat outside. You are eating healthy food because you are cooking this at home. Okay, next, you can also have fun together by cooking. You can bring your family together or your friends, ask them to come and cook together with you. And you can have fun cooking together. And also, you can also make food for sale if you cook yourself. Okay. Now let's go to paper 3, speaking test. Okay. Right. In the previous PT3 format, the speaking test was carried out as an individual basis. That means you do it on your own, by yourself. But in this new format, it is done in teams of two. So it means that you have to carry out the task in pairs. Okay, now there are three parts in this test which uh, requires you to carry out in 11 minutes. So, part one, part two, and part three. Now, only part two and part three will be evaluated, means that only part 2 and part 3 are where you will be given marks. Okay. Now in part 1, part 1 is a warming up session where students have to give responses to a simple interview. In part 2, each student will take turns to create a story from a series of pictures. Okay. You will be given a card which has a series of pictures that tells a story. So you need to describe the series of events that's happening in the picture. And of course, uh, students will also take turn to answer a short question based on their partner's story. Then uh, in part three, okay, part three is based on a discussion for three minutes. Now this discussion will be based on a mind map. Now the challenge that most students will face in this part, it's when one student is more dominant than the other. So, in this case, the shy or the timid student will have less opportunity to talk or elaborate during the discussion. So, as a result, the conversation will be one-sided. Okay, so now how can we avoid this from happening? Okay, how to get the discussions going? Now, first, always remember to talk to your friends. Talk to them. Keep talking. Do not keep your friends waiting too long for your responses. You should not be quiet at all times. Okay, two, you need to be an active participant in a discussion. There is only the two of you. So, it won't be much of a discussion if one of you is Passive. Okay, three. There are times when you need to stop and listen. Give a chance to your partner to talk. Okay? Now, if your partner is shy or passive, try to encourage him or her to talk by asking questions. Now, when you ask questions, 
when you ask questions, uh, your partner will be required to answer. So in a way, he or she will have to talk. Okay. Now, besides that, you should also show your partner that you are listening to him or her by doing gestures like nodding or smiling. Or maybe you just say a short yes or mm-hmm. Okay. Just to give encouragement to your partner. And number four, when you are discussing issues, never use vulgar words. Okay. Be kind. Okay. Even when you are disagreeing with your partner, please always talk politely, even when you are against his or her ideas. Okay. Now, to help you get a better idea on how the test will be practically conducted, here is the link to the YouTube by Lembaga Perperiksaan Malaysia on how the PT3 speaking test will be conducted. So, you can uh, go to YouTube, https www.youtube dot com slash uh, slash wash uh, w a t c h question v a u a one u i underscore five one nine a j w l i n k in YouTube. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Puan Norshida Hussein, and this is my colleague, Puanit Masleza Nid Mohammed. She will just listen to us. Now, what's your name? Um, my name is Fazwan Harith bin Sharudin, and you can call me Fazwan. Thank you. And what's your name? My name is Nur Adrena Arisa bin Abdul Khalid, and you can call me Adrena. Thank you. Where do you live, Fazwan? I live in Precinct 9, Putrajaya. I live in Precinct 11. Okay, do you enjoy studying English, Fazwan? Um, yes, indeed, I enjoy studying English as I have been learning it since I was six years old and I've learned to grow up with English. Thank you. Do you like learning English, Adriana? I do because learning is fun and there's many activities that I can do in learning English. Thank you. Fazwan? Yes? What do you usually do after school? Most of the days I would stay, stay back after school for approximately two to three hours. Uh, most of the time I would play football or I will do personal revisions. And Adriana, what do you usually eat in the school canteen? I usually eat uh, fried chicken or biscuits that are provided by the canteen. Fazwan. Yes? Do you like listening to music? I'm not really into music, so I don't really like. I'm not, I don't really listen to music. Why not? Um, because I don't. I don't feel it's an, a need in my life, and I prefer living without it. Adriana, yes? what's the best present you've ever had? The best present that I've ever had is a watch that was given by my parents during my birthday. Thank you. In this part of the test. I'm going to give each of you five pictures which tell a story. I'd like you to talk about them on your own for about a minute. You also need to answer a question briefly about your partner's pictures. Fazwan, it's your turn first. Here are your pictures. You now have some time to look at the pictures. Okay, Fazwan, are you ready? Yes. Now tell us the story in the pictures. It is 9th of March, the day Emily and her sisters Stella and Andra have been waiting for. They have been preparing for these days for weeks now. Um, while Emily and Stella stayed at home decorating and preparing, preparing um, the dining table with balloons and banners, Emily went out to the Susie's gift shop to buy gifts. Afterwards, she went to the Aunt May's bakery to buy her to buy her mother's favorite cake. And she returned home and contributed in decorating 
um, de decorating the dining table. At about 8 p.m., they hid behind the table patiently in the dark to wait for their mother to come to run, for their mother to come in. Um, as their mother came in, the, they surprised her mother with party poppers and a wish. Thank you, Fazwan. Adriana, how would you like to celebrate your birthday? I would want a surprise birthday party with my relatives and my close friends. Thank you. Can I have the booklet, please? Yes. Now, Adriana, here are your pictures. You now have some time to look at the pictures. Okay, are you ready, Adriana? Yes. Now tell us a story in the pictures. It was 10 in the morning when Ali went to the mall all by himself. He had always dreamed of buying a new pair of shoes since his old shoes are all worn out. At the shoe shop, he saw a very good shoes that he liked. Later that day, he went back to his home and realized that he didn't, he didn't have enough money to buy the shoes. Instead of, instead of feeling gloomy about it, he went to his kitchen as soon as possible to collect all the recyclable items to sell at the recycling center. Fortunately, he managed to earn some amount of money and use it for and use it to buy the new shoes. He couldn't wait to tell his friends about it. Thank you. First one. Yes. Do you usually save up your money to buy something that you like? Yes, I usually save money, especially after the school days. I keep it in my saving box. Thank you. Can I have the booklet, please? Thank you. Now, I'd like you to talk about something together for about two minutes. I'm going to describe a situation to you. I'd like you to imagine your school is organizing a camping trip in the jungle and you need to think about what to take with you. Here are some things you could take with you. First, you have some time to look at the task. Now, talk together about the different things you could take on the camping trip and say which one would be the most important. Are you ready? Yes. Please start. In my opinion, it is essential for students to bring their own snacks and sweets because they will feel very tired from doing all the activities during the camping trip. Yes, I agree. Energy boosters are required for students as the activities carried out will be tiring. Adriana, do you think torches are required for students to bring? I don't think it is important because we can use a mobile phone instead as a flashlight. So, how about maps? I do think it is important so that we wouldn't get lost in the woods. Moving on with magazines and books, I do think it is important to bring them be because it will um, it entertain us during the camping trip. I'll have to disagree with you. I don't think magazines and books are important because the objective of camping is to reconnect with the na nature. But by bringing magazines and books, you get isolated from the nature. You, yeah. What do you think about umbrellas? I think we should bring an umbrella in case of unfortunate weather. And we could, we could also use it to protect us from dangerous animals like snakes. And yeah, I think that this is why we should bring an umbrella. I agree with you. Um, above all of these options, what, which one do you think is the most important? I think it's snacks and sweets is the most important items to bring on the camping trip. Okay, thank you. That is the end of the test. Can I have the booklet, please? Yes. So in this video, uh, 
you will be shown on how the PT3 English language speaking test is carried out. Uh, now, the candidates in the video is uh, have a high, quite a high level of English, but the highest level for PT3 is actually B1 level. Okay. Now, finally, we come to the listening test. Okay, let's look at the listening test. Uh, we have uh, five parts in the listening test. Okay. I'm sure that this is the most challenging test for almost all our students because you need to listen carefully to what is being played on the audio. Okay, now the listening test is divided into five parts. Part one is where you have to answer a three option visual on MCQ or multiple choice answers. So in part one, you have to listen and you answer, your answer will be in form of graphic forms. Okay, pictures. Graphic form means pictures. So your choice of answers will be in forms of pictures. And in part two is a matching or sequencing questions where you might have to listen to a text about a procedure and you have to do either matching or you have to sequence the procedures. Okay, in part three is a three option multiple choice answers with text. Okay, you have to listen to a text and you answer the multiple choice question. Now, when I say multiple choice questions means you have a choice of A, B, C. Okay, in part four is uh, where you have to complete a note. It's a monologue. Okay, and it goes the same for part five. Okay, now uh, as you can see, there are five parts altogether, and you are required to listen carefully to the text or the conversation that is being played on the audio. And remember that this time, for the listening test, you will be sitting for the test as individuals. Okay. Now, how would you prepare for the listening test? Do you like listening to English songs? I'm sure you like to listen to all these uh, uh, songs from America and also from the British singers. Okay, now, you must put in mind that in CEFR, we use the British English accent. So, you need to get used to the first speaker's accent, which is the British English. And please, uh, British English, please remember that British English is not the same as the American English. So, other than uh, listening to songs, you can also watch English movies. Okay, for example, uh, Harry Potter. I'm sure you know who is Harry Potter. Okay. Uh, and so, I think that's all for the papers that you will sit for your PT3 exam. I hope that you have found all this talk beneficial and will help you to do your best to excel in your PT3 exam. So please take care and keep your body healthy by helping your parents at home while you are staying at home during the MCO or the movement control order and of course try to keep your hands off the mobile games once in a while and allocate time to focus on studying okay so this is all from me for today uh, don't forget to do all your revisions and prepare for the coming exam and I pray and I hope that all of you will excel with flying colors. Stay cool, 
stay home and stay safe. Thank you very much from me, Teacher Ida. Thank you.